Hey, Bass Geek here, and I love to throw a finesse swim bait during the spring, but that spring rain can dirty it up and make it tough. What do you do? I got something for you. Oh yeah, geeks, we're gonna talk about that too when it comes to the pulse fish jig. That's right, now you geeks have heard me talk about this, but we're gonna talk about the finesse versions of it. You've heard me talk about the big, the heavy, the cover water, the out deep. We're going to talk about the finesse style, especially when those shad and those bass are pushed up in that eight to 10 mark and the bass are busting those shad like we've had for the past few weeks. Now we got a little bit of rain just a few days back and it's muddied an otherwise clear lake up. So let me show you why I love to have this when the water gets dirty and I'm being on a finesse swim bait bite. So when I talk about finesse pulse head fish jig, it's this right here. This is an eighth ounce head and you can tell I've got a Damiki rig on it. This thing is incredible this time of year, especially when the water gets dirty and I'm fishing super shallow. It's also incredible for forward facing sonar when the shad are up shallow and the bass are up there chasing them. You can run this through and that pulse is gonna move that shad. It's gonna stand out and it's gonna get you bites. Now, I like the smaller version when they're probably that five to 10 feet deep. Maybe push that eighth ounce down to about 15. But after that, I'm definitely going with this. And this is the quarter ounce size. Now, you can take and wake these on the surface. And the quarter ounce is my favorite size to wake on the surface. But for the most part, what I've been doing is really trying to fish these slow. So I go back and forth between that eighth and that quarter. And those sizes allow me to fish this extremely slow and keep it right in front of those bass. But I've watched that from scoping, and I can tell you that 90% of the time, the bass are gonna want that bait that's just right in front of their face when they're up off the bottom. All right, geeks, so let me show you some of the baits that I like to put on these little pulse swimmers. First off, pulse does make, and this one has been beat up pretty badly, but they do make their own trailer to put on these. And by the way, if it gets real dirty, they make a skirted pulse jig. So you might wanna check that out. Gives it even more vibration flare coming through the water. So let me show you some of my favorite baits to put on this. Rarely do I ever put a paddle tail on. And the reason why is because I feel like the paddle tail and the pulse tend to fight against each other. So you got this sort of combination going and I think it actually hurts the action more than it helps the action. You geeks know I love my Domeki Armor Shad, big fan of the Domeki rig, big fan of the Domeki Armor Shad, and this is going to be one of my go-tos. As you can see, that's what I've got on the one we've been throwing today. Next up, I've got to go with my Yum FF Sonar Minnows. This is the JC Natural. When you're around some really finicky bass and some really small shad, this is one of my go-tos. This is the Great Lakes Drop Minnow. Another one that I love is by Nico, and it's that stretchy float material, so it even helps keep it up if you need it up just a little bit more. This is a good bait to put on there. And this is the Iconego Shad. If you guys watched any of my videos from the Knoxville show, you have seen these baits, and they have become a staple on a couple different rigs. One of those rigs is a Damiki rig, but these are by Reaper Baits. And this is one of my favorite colors. This is called the Mighty Minnow, and this is watermelon red. Last but not least, and this is something I haven't tried on the BR head yet, but I really do think it's gonna work. This is the Dead Shot. The color is called Cloud Nine. All right, geeks, so this is how I rig it. You know how it is. I'm always gonna tie me the Pizzantine knot on this. Now, <laughs> On the Damiki rig and tight line and whatever you want to call it, you know, normally go around seven times. 
back through the loop at the top. If you go through that bottom loop and through the top loop, that's the only difference between it and a San Diego jam. I do wet it. Pull it down tight, slide it down. And then cut the tag in. Now, we're gonna use a Armor Shad by Damiki. Again, you know what I always say, place it on there, find your hook, tell this one's been used a little bit today now the good thing about the armor shads is they got the split belly so what you can do is just go through and you want to come right out the center of that right there then you bring it up spin it around slide it up on there i would suggest putting a little bit of glue on these they don't have much of a keeper put it in the center and then just bend it down and come through that hole and that mark. Make sure it's good and straight so that it runs true. And there you have it. All right, Geek, so here's my setup for the finesse version of the Pulse Fish Jig. This is a Lose Custom Pro. Love this, love this spinning reel. It has done me extremely right. Of course, you can see my pink canine braid, 20 pound test, and I've got Pro 100 fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon from canine. Make sure you check that out. And what rod I'm using is TFO Tactical Elite. Now they don't make this. It has been replaced by the Taction line. I'll put a link in the description to make sure you know what rod to get. This is a 7-1 medium light. You can throw an eighth ounce to a, a half ounce and it's fast action. All right, let me show you how to fish this. All right, Geek, so if you're fishing these little pulse jigs, it dirties up the water, you're gonna fish these in the same exact place that you love to fish your little finesse swim baits. One caveat to that, I like it. You know, a lot of people think that you know, scoping these when they're out there chasing shad, when they're in those balls of shad, uh, in dirtier water, it's hard to do, but you can still do it. And that's why I love this because a little bit of vibration really gets those bass honed in on this thing. So let me show you the two different ways really there is to fish this thing. One is from the bank and one is out in open water. So when we're fishing a place like this, we're coming down a bank. I love a place that's got a little bit of wood or a little bit of rock cover or a little bit of rock transition. You can fish these things over top of grass, whatever, uh, you know, around boat docks, whatever you're fishing, you can fish these things around or over that. Not really gonna come through cover, but around it, over it, that's what you wanna do. Same goes with you guys for the from the bank. This is what you're gonna do. For me, I like to contour the bank. So bank or boat, you're gonna throw it out there. You're gonna throw it up shallow or as deep as you think the bass are. A lot of times I'm gonna to throw to that visibility line. So if it's muddied up one, two feet or less, I'm gonna throw it right up on the bank. And then I'm gonna give it a little sweep and I'm going to let it start contouring the bank. The great thing about this is it works at super slow speeds and it works just burning it too. And it doesn't blow out. The biggest thing on the retrieve is you wanna go slow and if you're coming down the bank, you actually want to slow down the farther down the bank you get, depending on the depth that you want to fish it. If you're on the bank coming up, hold your rod tip a little higher. On the boat coming down, hold your rod tip down. Hook set on this, you're just going to hook set straight up and you're just going to turn and reel down. Get that rod tip down as quick as you can, as always, and keep that bass from jumping and throwing that small hook. So in open water, I'm either using my forward-facing sonar or I'm throwing the busting shad. And I'm just making an accurate cast just past where I see them, reeling it through those shad. You're setting the hook straight up, reeling down, landing the bass. Hey, geeks, by the way, this is my son-in-law, Jacob. He uh, gave me my granddaughter, Lakeland, and my grandson, Grayson. So... Uh, he's married to my daughter, and we've been out fishing, doing a little fishing today on Norse. We've caught a few. They're uh, really, it's really starting to get hot. I'd like to be back here in a couple of weeks, but by the time you all see this video, I will probably have already been at the Red Crest and the Bassmaster Classic and probably missed 
the hottest fishing on this lake. You want to say hi to anybody? Just say hi and why to my wife and my kids. All right. Hey, geeks, make sure you go out and you pick up some of these scoping. Listen, we're going to be talking about some baits that a lot of people aren't telling you about when it comes to scoping. And this, this is one of my favorites. And as always, questions, comments in the comment section below. You geeks know I love to talk fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell. 100% Watch Squad. Join the 100% Watch Squad. All you got to do is watch every video when it comes out all the way through. It does help. Watch time helps the channel tremendously, and it helps the videos. So you 100% Watch Squad, I appreciate what you do for me. And as always, you geeks rock.